All right, so let's look at the application of SVD to doing some problems. Uh, first, we'll look at solving a system of homogeneous equations. So let's say we can form um, a system of equations in this form, ax equals 0. We have m equations and n unknowns, so we're going to need m greater than or equal to n minus 1. Rank of a is n minus 1. So note that any scaled version of x is also a solution to this equation. In fact, x equals 0 is a solution, but it's not an interesting solution. So we're going to see that the solution that we want is the eigenvector corresponding to the only zero eigenvalue of A transpose A. Okay, let's see why that's true. So we want to minimize the square of the product A, I'm sorry, the square of the norm of this uh, magnitude A times X. So multiplying through, um, a trans AX whole thing transpose times AX gets us A or X transpose A transpose A times X. Okay, and we're going to use the constraint since X can be any scale version of X, we're going to enforce that the uh, magnitude of X is equal to 1. Okay, the way you solve minimization problems with constraints like this is to in introduce what's called a Lagrange multiplier. So this lambda is actually different than the lambda that I showed earlier. It's just an arbitrary constant. So we, uh, instead of minimizing this equation, we minimize this one. So this term here enforces the constraint that x transpose x equals 1. Okay, so to minimize this, we take the derivative with respect to x and set it equal to 0. And what we get is a transpose a times x equals lambda x. So this is exactly our eigenvalue eigenvector system again. So lambda is the eigenvalue of a transpose a, and x is an eigenvector. So what is lambda? Well, we, um, we also want to minimize um, the Lagrangian, this quantity, and we can do that when lambda equals zero. So that means that um, x, the, the first eigenvector, the eigenvector corresponding to the zero eigenvalue is the eigenvector that we want. Uh, just an illustrative example, here is a matrix A uh, let's say we want to find the solution x to the equation ax equals 0. So x is going to be a um, three-element vector, a three-by-one vector. Forming the product a transpose a, we get um, this product here. So we want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that. Um, just going through the straightforward algebra on that, we get three eigenvalues and three eigenvectors. Here's the first one, second one, and third one. So I said that the eigenvector corresponding to the zero eigenvalue is the one we want. So supposedly x equals 0, 0, 1 is our solution here. So plugging that into our original equation, a equals 0, we get a times 0, 0, 1. Multiplying through, we get 0, 0. So so that's a vector zero, so it does work. All right, so to use SVD to do this, um, we start with our equations A equals, A equals zero. We want to find the eigenvector corresponding to the zero eigenvalue. We do that by taking the SVD of A, and then we find, um, remember the columns of V are the eigenvectors of A transpose A. So we want the eigenvector corresponding to the zero eigenvalue. And since the columns are ordered, that's the rightmost column of V. So for an example, again, that same matrix A, the SVD de decomposition of that looks like this. And here is the rightmost column um, of, our, of our vector V here. I guess I should have put a transpose here. <laughs> Okay, to do this in MATLAB, MATLAB has a um, 
function called SVD, which returns our matrices U, D, and V. And then to pull out the rightmost column, I would just use a colon. Colon means um, get the whole column, and this is um, the last column, the rightmost column. So just uh, grab this code. and run this. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I started with my matrix A. Here's my uh, the decomposition in terms of U D and V, and here is um, the resulting solution X, which is what we wanted. All right, um, the other thing we're going to see SVD being used for is to enforce constraints. So sometimes you generate a numerical estimate of a matrix A, but the values of A are not all independent but they should satisfy some algebraic constraints. For example, the columns and rows of a rotation matrix should be orthonormal. But the matrix that you found, I'll call it A prime, does not necessarily satisfy those constraints. So that could be a problem. You want a matrix that is a valid rotation matrix, um, and you want to get a matrix that does. So SVD can be used to find the closest matrix in terms of the Frobenius norm that satisfies the constraints exactly. So the procedure is, we'll do the following. We'll take the SVD of, of A, so we'll get a UDV transpose. Then we throw away this D, and we create a new matrix called D prime, I'll call it, that has the singular values equal to those uh, that we want when the constraints are satisfied exactly. And then we just reform our matrix using that D, D prime, and using the original U and V that we obtained from up here. So by construction, this matrix will satisfy the desired constraints by construction. So here's an example of uh, applying this to a rotation matrix. So this code is from uh, earlier in the course. We can create a valid rotation matrix by multiplying three matrices together, each rotating about a single axis. Um, now I'm just going to perturb this so it's no longer a uh, valid rotation matrix. Okay? Just random, independently perturbing each point um, a little bit. Here I take the SVD of uh, that perturbed matrix, um, and here I'm recovering the, a valid rotation matrix that's hopefully close to the true one by substituting in the, um, the constraints that I want, which is that the singular values are all equal to 1. Okay, so here is my um, my original valid uh, rotation matrix. Here's a perturbed one. Here, here's the actual diagonal singular uh, uh, diagonal matrix of singular values that I got. As you can see, they're not all equal to one. They're slightly different. And here is the matrix that I recover by enforcing that the diagonal matrix should be equal to one. So um, this matrix now is a little bit different than the um, the, the true matrix I started with before I added noise, but it's pretty close. So, but, but this, at least we know, is a valid rotation matrix.